Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Thursday, August 27th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So we're going to take a look at a new order that's on the horizon impacting Ohio schools, plus how you can watch the Browns this Sunday, sort of, um, and a whole lot more. But before we dive too deep into anything, let me get you updated on the latest coronavirus data. Today, there have been 1,244 new cases reported, and that's compared to the 21-day average of 1,017. Dwine did say this increase isn't surprising, though, as many college students have returned to campus and are moving around a lot more. However, today also brought 32 new coronavirus-related deaths, and that's compared to the average of 22. Hospitalizations are unfortunately also up with 107 new admissions. The 21-day average comes in at just 85. But ICU admissions are down quite a bit with 9 today compared to the average of 14. And DeWine also updated his list of counties in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 to the least. So, unfortunately, we had two Northwest Ohio counties in the top 10, with Henry County jumping all the way up to that number one spot. Now, DeWine said that this is because there were 67 new cases found in the last two weeks, with more than half of those associated with a long-term care facility. Sandusky dropped out of the top 10, which is good, but Erie has now crept back into the ninth spot, and that county now has 156.2 cases per 100,000. And as a reminder, the CDC threshold for high incidence is 100. So six counties were at the level three red category on Thursday, the lowest since the system's inception. Locally, both Lucas and Erie have stayed at this level for weeks. Erie apparently had a large outbreak at a long-term care facility, which then unfortunately spread out to the community. And Lucas is still above that threshold for a high rate of spread with 110 per 100,000. But 76 counties have stuck at that same alert level, which is the smallest movement between levels the state has experienced. So good news, maybe we are hitting some sort of plateau. And as we expected, DeWine announced today that Ohio's K-12 schools will be required to come up with a reporting system for positive COVID-19 cases. The order has not been issued just yet, but the governor did give us a sneak peek on what could be packed in there. So after learning of a student or staff member who tests positive, K-12 schools must report that case to the local health department as quickly as possible. Schools should also make information about a positive case publicly available and notify parents in writing, including as much information as possible possible without disclosing protected health information. Plus, the local health department is expected to notify the Ohio Department of Health on a weekly basis about newly reported cases in schools, as well as the cumulative case data for students and teachers. And DeWine said that data will be posted every Wednesday at coronavirus.ohio.gov. But let's pause for a moment so I can update you on an unfortunate story to come out of Toledo last night. Toledo police are investigating after two people were found dead in a car parked near the docks. Police say they went out to the area after receiving multiple reports of a person down around 7.45 p.m. When they arrived, they found 33-year-old Brandon Beltran of Wisconsin and an unidentified woman in a blue sedan in the parking lot across from the docks. Officers say that because of evidence found at the scene, the incident is being investigated as an overdose, but we will keep you updated on any new information if it does become available. But shifting gears a bit here to the world of sports for a minute. Now, look, I'm not a football gal myself, but I know so many of you have been waiting all summer for some football. And while NFL season is inching closer, we've got a way for you to reminisce with some classic Browns games starting this Sunday. You can catch the highlights from the 2002 Browns versus Falcons matchup starting at noon, followed by Browns versus Giants from 2008 at 3 p.m. And the bonus is if you can't quite recall what happened in those games, it's like, watching something completely new. So win-win. And tonight is the final night of the Republican National Convention, so let's look at what's ahead. The theme of the night is Land of Greatness, and the lineup will include GOP congressional leaders as well as a number of activists and religious leaders. But here are some of the key speakers this evening. President Donald Trump, of course, is scheduled to accept his party's renomination in an address from the White House South Lawn. His address is likely to be fairly long, listing his second term priorities, and after he's done, a fireworks show is expected to launch from the National Mall. 
The president will be introduced by his daughter Ivanka Trump, the fourth of his five children, to speak during the convention. She's expected to focus on how he's offered to help working families, draw contrasts between her father and Biden, and include personal anecdotes about her father's decision making. And one other person of note tonight will be Donald Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who's set to help close out the convention. Giuliani is known for his tough on crime approach during his time as New York City's mayor, something that dovetails with the law and order theme the GOP has been pushing much of this week. And if you'd like to watch, we again will have that streaming on our website, WTOL.com, and on our Facebook page, and it all kicks off tonight at 8.30. But that's all I have for you today to keep up with all of your top headlines. You can watch us nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And to keep up with these updates, make sure you like the video and hit subscribe so you get a little alert to your phone when I hop on here. But with all of that, I hope you have a very happy Thursday.